so the first thing I'm going to do is, so I have Adobe Illustrator open, um, and I'm going to make um, my first first document for an invitation. So a uh, normal invitation size is five by seven. So I'm going to do this portrait and then um, I only use one artboard and um, for a bleed I usually do 0.25 inches. So what bleeds are is if your design goes over the edge at all, a bleed will help when printing so the printer you won't have any white space on the outside so it gives that little bit of extra space so when the printer prints it and cuts it down um, it'll go off the edge rather than um, having a little bit of white um, I usually use CMYK unless the printer um, specifies to use RGB and then I always do high because that is going to make it the best quality so when I say okay um, I open it, see the red line, that is the bleed, um, and then the 5 by 7 sheet is right in the middle. One thing um, to note, and I know I've gotten this question before, is um, should you use Photoshop at all in the creation of wedding invitations? And the answer is sometimes. So I use it occasionally um, when I am doing calligraphy um, on paper um, just to clean it up, but for the most part, everything happens in Illustrator. Um, it's going to be the easiest place. Photoshop is not meant for, um, for things with text. It's only meant for photo manipulation. So, so now that I have the names, um, depending on what sort of um, invitation you're making. Um, it'll depend on where you go next for your other elements. So you can choose to draw them yourself, um, draw them procreate and do the exact same thing um, by using the the trace tool to put them in and vectorize them. Um, this gives you the ability to make them bigger and smaller without losing um, any quality. Um, and then um, you can also go to a few of my recommended sites for getting elements. So um, one of the biggest things that I use is a website called FreePick. It has really great vectors and different graphic resources. So say you wanted to do flowers or something. You can go in and all of these things are either vectors or things you can put right into your design. So what you're looking for is a .ai file or a .eps file because that will, um, especially if it's a vector, that's what's going to bring it in and make it super high quality. I used this one. So I, I found this one earlier. I downloaded it and I actually, so I have it in my downloads. So what I did is I used the EPS file and um, I drag it into Illustrator so then it opens. And then what you do from here is usually they have um, a clipping mask on them or something, but if you release the clipping mask, it'll release those images. Um, and then ungroup it and then you can get just the individual elements. So for example, this one, um, I would just drag it over and put it in here. And this is one of those things that is going to go off the edge of the page. So I would make it so that it does still go off the edge of the page. So now that it's in here, I usually use the um, bleeds as guidelines. It doesn't have to go all the way to the edge of the bleeds. It can go past these bleed lines too. It'll only include the bleed from here. Another place I go if I, if I can't find what I'm looking for in free pick where it is free, is I go to creativemarket.com. This is a lot of other artists who put their own, own artwork up for you to download and, and add to your designs. So this is where I get a lot of my, for example, my watercolor flowers. Um, when I'm doing a larger scale project, I typically don't draw them myself. So I'll go to Creative Market and find the perfect flowers. See, they have so many beautiful ones. 
for any sort of any sort of theme that you're thinking and they have really beautiful things different borders different fonts if you want to use a font so that's another place that I go for this specific invitation um, it's meant to be a, a rustic country theme with the color purple and so I'm just gonna I'm doing a couple different designs to see but this I'll show you what I do exactly with these so when I design invitations, um, I ask the clients exactly how they want their wording to be. So when you're doing invitations, um, it's um, important to know the different variations and how you can word them. So for this one, um, this wedding is happening at a non-religious place. So if it was in a church, it'd be different. For this, they are getting married and they have their reception in the same place, which is a uh, outdoor venue. So that determines parts of how this is worded. So I'm going to take my calligraphy. Typically, the the bride's name goes first, even though the traditional way of saying Mr. and Mrs. when they're married is men first, but in this case, it's women that go first, and then they are hosting their own wedding so their parents aren't helping out so I'm gonna take I usually just start with whatever um, font is up I'll change it later I'm um, gonna use the text uh, the type tool and I did that and because they're hosting it themselves the way I'm wording it is Michelle and John request the and this is a more traditional way of writing it. You don't have to write it like this. Some people say, you know, just invite you to celebrate their wedding, invite you to celebrate their marriage, all these different things. But for this, we are going with a more traditional way. So if the couple wasn't hosting or if they had help from their families, sometimes it'll say together with their families up here, Michelle and John request the pleasure of your company. So we're using pleasure of your company and honor of your company or honor of your presence are typically used when it's in a church, but for this it's not. So I'm going to do at their wedding because that is usually traditional. And then when it comes to choosing fonts, I typically recommend using only one extra font, the bolded version, if you need some variation, though you can use more than one. The more you use, the, the messier it's going to look. So I have some go-to fonts, but for this, I'm going to use a serif font, which is Playfair Display. I also got a question from Instagram about what fonts you can and can't use. Um, any fonts that come on your computer are fair game. You can really use any font you want, it's even if you're selling your invitation designs or anything like that. The fonts, fonts are usually fair game. Unless you downloaded them and they say for personal use only or something like that, I usually use defont.com to get my fonts. I'll occasionally buy fonts, but usually I won't because I can usually write write like it. So if you're looking for specific fonts, you can go in and you can actually download them um, and include them in your design. It makes it a little bit easier. I find that the best fonts usually aren't the ones that came on your computer. So you can go ahead and you can use whatever you want. I usually choose a serif or a sans serif font, not both, but that's up to you. And then usually the next piece of it is the wedding date. And the traditional way of writing it is to spell everything out. So Saturday, I'm going to use a different uh, date just to, for privacy purposes because I'm actually doing this invitation for a client. Saturday the of July. 2018 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So usually you would say afternoon or evening or morning. And then this time is always the time of the 
ceremony. So if they're having the reception at the same location, you can, the, that's the reason why I had um, dinner and dancing to follow. You do not include that if they are not at the same location. You would take that out and include a reception card, for example, instead. So I usually try to stick to a 10 or 11 point font. You can go down to 8. 8 is the smallest you should really go just because of printing purposes and reading for older, older people. And then I'm just going to go keep going here so I can do it. So an option to do it um, when you're an illustrator, Illustrator makes it nice and easy to work with text. Um, you can go and use a bolded font and then same for this. So that's something that you can do. Another thing that I have that I have to add to this is this dinner and dancing to follow. So I added it and I included it. I put it in there from the um, Procreate document that I had and then I'm going to do the same thing I did with their names. So I'm going to trace it. I'm going to ignore the white and I'm going to expand it. So I'm just going to select this because it's not doing it right. If you use the direct selection tool, if you ever run into that issue, um, you can use the direct selection tool and just select around there trying to grab all the anchor points. Same with this. I'm going to go in, just do that, and take it and put it kind of centered underneath it. Now they're all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it small and I'm going to make this even smaller, pretty small, and put it right at the bottom. So obviously it's not fitting perfectly right now and that's okay. I might actually end up taking these and um, moving them slightly so then they're more across the whole top. So this, I'm going to move this up, and um, it's going to need an ampersand uh, for the and or the word, the word and. Um, I do like the Playfair display ampersand. So, so one thing you can do just to speed up some things if you know it's not going to change is to go to type and click create outlines. This just outlines the font so it's really nice and easy to work with. So for this, I think I'm going to change the opacity, which is up here, um, say to 30%, and put it behind maybe 10%, like that. So there's an ampersand, but it's you know kind of out of the way. So those grid lines that you see help you to get things centered. So it makes it really nice. So you can see it's centered. That would be the center of the line there. So that is how I do the bases. I don't usually add color until after I get the design mostly set up. So for this one, she wanted a purple. So that's what I'm going to add here. I can just add, I'll find a good purple. Um, it all depends on, you know, kind of what, what the client wants and it can get added to your swatches. You can save your swatches so then you can keep using that. So I'm just going to change everything here to this purple um, just to see how it looks. And then same thing for, for these. I'm just going to quick do that. And they do change color because they're vectors, which is one of the benefits of using um, vectors is you can quickly change the color. Before I start this, I usually do all of my thinking and planning while I'm actually designing. Some people like to sketch out their ideas, but usually I don't like doing that unless it's a very specific style or if I'm doing a lot of the graphics, for example. So to talk a little bit about next steps in terms of printing. So I work with a local printer. I do all my printing through them, mostly because it's my boyfriend's dad's print shop. But the way that printers like to have, have the files is usually as a PDF. So when you save this, you can press Control or Command S. That'll save. I'll save it as as an Adobe Illustrator document first, and then I'll save it 
as a PDF. So when you do the PDF, you're going to come up with all these options. You do not need to keep the Illustrator editing capabilities if you don't want. I'm going to just keep it on. Most of these are good. The only thing that you really want on your document is trim marks. So that's the main thing that they need. Registration marks usually are used for letterpress. It might help for letterpress, but trim marks is all it needs. So I save the PDF. And then one thing I make sure to do every time I send any sort of design to a printer is I outline all the fonts because if they don't have a certain font, sometimes it can get messed up when they're trying to print it. So what I do is I go up to here, go up to type and create outlines. So now it outlined all the fonts. The rest of these are outlined and they're all vectors, which is great. So then I just press command S again. So it saves my PDF. And then if you go and open the PDF, you will see that there's crop marks. So when it gets printed, they know exactly how much to cut off. So you can see in here, um, the crop marks, this is where your, um, your bleed was. So if it's getting cropped, it gets cropped on these right here. So it is gonna cut some of that off. But yeah, so that's the file that you need. And then if you have any questions, let me know. I will be putting a FAQ section in a blog post on my website, which is mjcreativeco.com, and you can feel free to post a comment or reach out to me on Instagram to ask me questions. I may do follow-ups on this, but for now, good luck in designing your own invitations. I'm sure you're going to do amazing. Thank you.